Have you ever met someone who claimed to be a deconstructionist? To tell you the truth, I don't really know what the textbook definition of deconstructionist actually is. If I were to venture a guess, I would probably say a deconstructionist is someone who deconstructs. Yes, I have a university degree. He impressed. I first started thinking about deconstructionists when one of my comic idols, Craig Ferguson, mentioned it during a monologue on the Late Late Show. He was going on about cheeky monkeys and foul-mouthed fluffy bunny rabbits when he mentioned his desire to continue the deconstruction of late-night television. I have always considered my current position to be the late-night equivalent of the newspaper world. Maybe that's my way of addressing a position that most people look at with a certain degree of surprise. Oh, really? Is a common response when I tell people what I do for a living. What's that like? When people kept asking me that question, I started doing crazy things. Like making videos with puppets and writing about kids who procrastinate on term papers. Just so I would have something interesting to say when people would toss that cue, my D. That's code for question and direction, for y'alls that be square. I have no idea what I'm saying anymore. Deconstructionism is interesting when you think about it, probably because most of us have been taught that taking something apart is a negative rather than a positive. I mean, creation is remarkable because we made something that wasn't there before. We feel as though we contribute. Deconstruction means that we take something apart. We remove something that was there before, destroying it in a sense. However, the word destroy might be a little strong, don't you think? I mean, not everything that's created is great. For example, Michigan fans have yet to prove they can contribute to society in a meaningful way. I'm not sure who created them, but I'm pretty sure that was a mistake. As Craig Ferguson says, I look forward to your letters. Just look back at history and see what good deconstruction has done. I bet people in East Germany were pretty happy to see the Berlin Wall get deconstructed. And segregation wasn't exactly a happy barrier either. The continued pull down of that wall is for the better. And keep shattering that glass ceiling, ladies, because that is definitely a deconstruction project worth going after. Then again, none of those examples really apply to my current line of work. There's not some evil force preventing me from writing stories or doing other pieces of journalistic work. It's not like I'm a producer on the movie Road to 9-11. And that which I helped to legally create is being suppressed by a leadership who wants to rewrite history. Yeah, that's right, I said it. So put that in your fairness doctrine and smoke it. Maybe deconstructionism hasn't gotten a fair shake. Maybe it isn't so much about destroying something as much as it is looking at things from a different perspective. It's like taking a Shakespeare play out of the Victorian era and having it set in modern day Harlem or on the moon. It's the same play, just a different way to look at it. Deconstructionizing, yeah. I just made up my own version of the verb. Feel free to use it as you please. I do expect royalties if published. Seems like a fun way to pursue things. Granted, we can't literally deconstruct everything, but it might serve as a great reminder there is more than one way to look at a situation. More than one way to skin a cat. More than one way to paddle a boat. Steer a canoe. Maneuver a battleship. I'm not sure why I'm going with all the nautical themes. But hey, why not? I'm just looking at things a little differently. And that is Sweeney's side.